The advice on choosing passwords is to choose a unique password for every single website, but how difficult does that make it to remember? Well, that's very frustrating, but if you're trying to remember passwords, you're going about it completely the wrong way. Well, you should really use a password manager, but anyway, that advice is aside from this video. Why is it necessary to use a different password? Well, it stops a form of attack called credential stuffing. The credential stuffing is an emerging form of attack that uses automated scripts to try out username or password pairs to gain access to a system. This is, however, not to be confused with a brute force attack, since unlike the former, no guesswork is being done in credential stuffing. And the attack is extremely effective because about 83% of people surveyed use the same password across multiple sites. In other words, one password acts as a skeleton key for the rest of the locks. So there's a diagram there of how credential stuffing works, but I'm not going to discuss the exact theory of how it works, but more of the history and how we have gotten to this situation where it's so possible to try a password from a user against multiple different websites and have a high accuracy rate of being able to log in to their account. On Wikipedia, there's a list of the top 25 most common passwords which have been collected since 2011. As you can see, there are some very common features in the list, namely that password and 123456 have been extremely common. And this data even appears in mainstream media, with the whole incentive of trying to make people more secure in their password choice. But how did we get here? Well, back in 2009, there was a company called RockU and they suffered a data breach. There was 32 million user accounts and the company used an unencrypted database to store user account data including plain text passwords, as opposed to a one-way form of hashing, which is the modern choice. RockU would also email the password unencrypted to user during account recovery. They also did not allow special characters in the password, and hackers use a 10-year-old SQL vulnerability to gain access to the data. So that was pretty poor of RockU, but that treasure trove of data of 32 million accounts and plain text passwords allowed the hacking community to gain a great insight to use the choice of passwords. And the resulting passwords from RockQ is readily available and very easy to find. But moving on to 2013, and there was a company called Adobe who suffered a data breach. Initially, they thought there was 38 million active users, but it actually turned out to be 150 million user accounts containing usernames and passwords. The problem was Adobe didn't protect the data with a one-way cryptographic hashing algorithm, but they did at least protect the data, unlike RockU. Although in reality, it wasn't really protected at all. So the whole database was decrypted within a few hours. It didn't help that people literally put plain text password hints, which were pretty much the password. So, so if you happen to see these list of password hints, one to six numbers, <laughs> 654321. You're not, not exactly going to be guessing Aardvark for the answer, but more like, uh, yeah, 123456. So these were the first 50 passwords that were readily identified from the Adobe breach with a resulting count as well. So what do we have? We have just shy of 2 million users choosing the password 123456. All the data for the Adobe breach has been decrypted. So the hacking community gains even more insight to the choice of passwords users are taking. The same thing happens again with LinkedIn in 2016, although the data was actually from 2012, they just took a while to find out that what had actually happened. The data from LinkedIn, 177 million user accounts, although at least LinkedIn had actually made some sort of effort to secure the passwords in a one-way hashing algorithm, SHA-1, Although they didn't exactly do much else to protect it. They didn't use a salt, which would be putting some random characters on the end of the password because that actually makes it really difficult, or not difficult, but slows down the rate. You can crack passwords. You could have many people using the same password, which would be extremely visible because you would see exactly the same hash value. Anyway, the result of these 177 million passwords, 85% of them were cracked within the first 24 hours. 24 hours to get 150 million passwords for email accounts. And that's an example there of a hash. The working knowledge in a SHA-1 hash results in that figure there.
And again, the LinkedIn data is readily available. Let's say if I was to do a search on a public website for the word LinkedIn, and I find a file that is 21 gig in size, well, I'm not exactly sure that's going to be full of CVs. Uh, more likely it's going to be full of other data, other plain text data, yeah, usernames and passwords, hashes of passwords, of which we know that 85% of them were cracked in the first 24 hours. So why is this such a problem? So just hours after the eagerly anticipated rollout of Disney Plus streaming service last year, customers began complaining on social media that they were being locked out of their accounts or experiencing other disruptions in the streaming of Disney movies and shows. The initial concern was that perhaps cybercriminals had launched a massive cyber attack on the new streaming service, bringing it to its knees. However, Disney says there is no indication of a security breach. And the problem might be so-called credential stuffing, exactly what I've just been talking about. Known passwords and username combinations. Disney signed up 10 million subscribers on the first day, so as mathematically there's a statistically probable chance that some of those subscribers had been hacked in the past and simply had never changed their username or password combination. The credential stuffing attack scenario would appear to explain the number of other observations, including the fact that only a relatively small number of user accounts were hijacked. If a much more sophisticated attack had been carried out, wouldn't the number of users finding their accounts hijacked be in the millions, not the thousands? And it resulted on some of those accounts being made for sale in certain areas of the internet and the username and password combination being sold from between three and eleven dollars so that is exactly the problem of choosing the same username and password combination for many different websites and he mentioned have i been pwned there in the article and yep that is the website for finding out if your email address has appeared in a compromised data breach and we find that breaches are being added all the time. Recently, there was one for a certain adult dating website, although the breach was back from 2016. So what can you as a user do to protect yourself from brute force, credential stuffing, or password spraying attacks? Well, brute force, well, every single password can be cracked eventually. It's just a question of can it be cracked in seconds or is it going to take millions of years? And I think that'll be a subject for another video because even some of these uh, estimations on time to crack are wildly optimistic. Just, no, no. I've seen results say millions of years and it's more like um, minutes or hours. Credential stuffing I've just talked about, that is username and password pairs obtained from historical breaches. And password spraying is testing a single weak password against a large number of different accounts because we already know what the top 25 passwords are going to be. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, password, as well as, yeah, all the other options listed. So odds are people have taken one of those weak passwords. Multi-factor authentication, yeah, if MFA is offered by a website, then that is an extremely reliable way of preventing credential stuffing attacks although it's not offered on every single website. But yes, uh, Microsoft has suggested it would stop 99.9% .9 of account compromises. Although, and much of the remaining advice in this article is more about the people who have to hold the data. So talking about other defenses, uh, I've got secondary password, pins, security questions, a bit of an annoyance really, captures, well, captures are easily broken, <laughs> take longer for the human to solve than they robot or script to solve, IP blacklisting, not very reliable really. Device fingerprinting, uh, that's a subject I spoke about recently, that is a positive use of device fingerprinting in that does a, use, does a user sign in from this particular device operating system or is it something completely different? Well yes it can be completely different if they're logging in from a phone instead of a computer but uh, it's all factors that you should take into consideration in identifying a particular user. In fact, One other use of device fingerprinting is perhaps making MFA more aggressive on checking. So That option is there. Requiring unpredictable usernames. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> forcing the user to choose something else. Uh, yeah, so other options are listed, and of course there is the thing about how passwords are being protected. Uh, there are different methods of hashing algorithms that do make it considerably harder for password attacks to take place, but again, that is a subject 
for another video, and it's nothing as you as a user can do, but uh, you're putting a lot of trust into different websites in storing your personal data safely, and the reality is that some just are not doing that. As we found in 2009, RockU were storing their passwords completely plain text. You didn't even need to do anything to work out what the passwords were. You could just read it off a list. Adobe weren't exactly doing much better. They were using a very weak hashing algorithm. So that was all broken within a matter of hours. LinkedIn, still not very good. Many of the passwords are cracked in the first 24 hours. There are better methods available. Sorting a password helps, so that's adding some random text to the end of a password. So it means that every single password has to be attempted. You can't just go, oh, that hash equals that, so we know that many different passwords. It makes it very difficult, slows things down for the attacker. As an individual, all you can do is make it hard by doing different passwords for each website. That way, if you lose one, an attacker cannot gain access to all your accounts. They can gain access to one, and that is it, one account. So that's the effects of a password spraying attack. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.